Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie State. Good morning. Our headlines today. The first doses of a coronavirus vaccine could arrive in Britain within hours after the UK became the first to approve the jab developed by Pfizer and BioNTech. We will be putting your questions to England's Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Professor Jonathan Van Tam. That's coming up at 8.30. Students taking GCSE and A-level exams in England next year will be marked more generously to make up for the disruption caused by the pandemic. Good morning. Today is a cold day ahead and for Scotland and Northern Ireland, risk of ice first thing, but then sunshine and showers. The showers mostly in the north and west, but still wintry in the hills. England and Wales, rain or showers, and some of those showers wintry in the hills as well. I'll have all the details in about 10 minutes. Good morning, it's Thursday the 3rd of December. Our top story is that the first doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech coronavirus vaccine could arrive in Britain within hours. A mass vaccination programme will begin next week after the UK became the first country in the world to approve the jab yesterday. Andy Moore has the details. The UK has become the first country in the Western world to authorise the use of a vaccine. At a press conference, vaccine development was once again compared to a train coming down the track. The train has now slowed down safely. It has now stopped in the station and the doors have opened. That was the authorisation by the MHRA. What we need now is for people to get on that train and travel safely to their destinations. The Prime Minister called it a huge moment, but he also urged caution. It's all the more vital that as we celebrate this scientific achievement, we're not carried away uh, with over-optimism or fall into the uh, naive belief that the struggle is over. It's not. We've got to stick to our winter plan. 800,000 doses of the vaccine are due to arrive in the UK shortly. They have to be kept at very low temperatures, so distribution at first will be through major hospitals. That means that care home residents, although top of the government's priority list, are unlikely to get the vaccine first. The UK regulator said the process of authorisation had been rapid, but no less thorough. No corners have been cut. Our expert scientists and clinicians have worked round the clock, carefully, methodically, poring over tables and analyses and graphs on every single piece of data. The vaccine rollout is due to happen across all four nations of the UK at the same pace. In Northern Ireland, officials have set aside a new hospital emergency department as one of seven designated vaccination sites. In Scotland, the first doses are expected to be given on Tuesday. Other vaccines are also on the horizon. One developed by Oxford University and AstraZeneca is currently being reviewed by the UK regulator. Another from the American company Moderna is also being examined by regulators around the world. It will take months to roll out vaccines to everyone in the UK who wants one, but the process is set to begin very shortly. Andy Moore, BBC News. Students sitting GCSE and A-level exams in England next year will be awarded more generous grades to compensate for the disruption to schooling during the pandemic. Pupils will receive advance notice of exam topics and be allowed to use memory aids. Measures will also be put in place to help students who miss exams because of self-isolation. Here's more from our education editor, Branwyn Jeffries. Heading home to self-isolate, year 11 at this secondary school. Just before it was confirmed, some shared their GCSE fears with me. I have a lot of worries about GCSEs because I really feel like there's not much being done about the amount of time we missed. But I'm especially worried about English and maths because those are a must-have for any sixth form. I prefer to be in school to learn, so the disruption to that is just going to really knock my focus off my education. So would narrowing down the topics in each subject help? I think that will be the most beneficial thing, one of the most beneficial things that they can do because it really like gives you that tiny bit of hope that we need at this time just so then we get that little bit of help that we noticed. I wish there was a bit more done, honestly. Um, I feel like obviously that's going to help, but it might not be enough to really make everyone feel comfortable with what they're doing because personally I'm not confident with what I'm doing, but I feel like it will help a little bit. 
How will GCSE and A-level exams work in 2021? Grades will be more generous than normal, mainly in line with 2020. Advance warning of some topics will be given, but not the questions. Some study aids will be allowed. That could be a formula or a vocabulary list. And special measures will be used to work out grades for an exam missed. After a term of COVID disruption, this does give schools a bit more certainty, but they're going to have to wait until January to find out what topics will be in which exam papers. And there's still one big unanswered question. How do you take account of the fact that some kids have missed so much more learning than others? So an expert group will look at that bigger picture, but grades aren't likely to be adjusted. And here, they're worried about disruption after Christmas. If we stick to the plan and the, the continual disruption across the country happens right through until till whether it's March, April, I think you're going to have a, a massive impact on the well-being of young people and families and we're going to see a very unfair system and probably return to the debacle of last summer. Northern Ireland also plans to hold exams, but in Wales they've been cancelled, while Scotland only plans to have exams for hires. Schools are still dealing with coronavirus. Faith in these plans will be tested in the next few months. Brownman Jeffries, BBC News, Hearn Bay. Students heading back to university in England after Christmas face a staggered return to avoid a surge in coronavirus cases. Plans drawn up by the government will see those on more practical courses such as science or medicine going back in early January, while those studying subjects like English history and maths may have to wait until February. The announcement comes as a seven-day travel window opens today to allow students to return home for the Christmas break. Pubs, bars and restaurants in Jersey are set to close from midnight in order to tackle a surge in COVID cases. Takeaways and shops can remain open, but people must follow the two-metre social distancing rule. The circuit breaker measures are expected to remain in place there until the 4th of January. 56 new cases were identified yesterday. That's the biggest daily total for Jersey recorded so far. Sainsbury's will pay back around £440 million of business rates relief it accepted from the government to help deal with the pandemic. Yesterday, Tesco said it will return more than half a billion pounds. Morrison's announced a £274 million repayment. The government introduced the 12-month business rates holiday in March because it feared retailers would struggle during the COVID crisis. Sending live animals abroad for slaughter will be banned in England and Wales under government plans announced today. The Environment Secretary, George Eustace, says the measures could be in place by the end of 2021. But the National Farmers Union warned that any big changes to regulations could have a massive impact on the UK food supply chain. See the headlines as they happen and watch BBC News live in the app and get the full story with bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News.